before you even hit the earth. That's why backsliding doesn't work on you. That's why engaging in worldly lifestyles is very short-lived. That's why you feel out of place trying to live a little or just see what's out there. Because you are marked by God, your spiritual DNA knows who you truly are. Feeling like you have no control over your life can be frustrating, but trying to rebel against God's hand on your life is a losing fight. Here's the word of wisdom. Just submit. I don't know about y'all, but today looked like a good day to give your life to Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and the prophet Elijah wanted to die, and still the Lord used him for great things. Sometimes in our pain we withdraw, and the accuser comes and tells us we're not worthy and we can't do it. Remember that the Lord's heart was open, and he felt the pain of others, and it moved him to do great works. Don't be deceived. What's within you is a fire that burns much greater than even the fire that you've walked through. The fire of God that goes in you and demonstrates to the world the power of God. It is a beautiful testimony. Don't be cast down. Don't be disheartened. Go forward in your grief and let the joy of the Lord sustain you even deeper than the wells of your sorrow and let it flow through you the power of it is inside you. Don't deny it. Let it speak. Life can get so busy that you forget about God. When I do that, when life becomes more important than God, I'm stressed, I'm anxious. Everything he saved me from when I was alone with him, come back. Let's talk about Samson. So usually when we think of Samson, we think of him as another one of those Bible characters that we hear about all the time. We know Samson, we know Delilah, we hear about them in Sunday school, but when you really break down the story of Samson, it is one of the most tragic stories in the entire Bible, in my opinion. There are stories to teach us, train us, inspire us, but there are also stories that are put in the Bible for the purpose of warning us. And Samson's story, if it's nothing else, it is a warning story. So let's break it down. So the story of Samson starts in Judges 13, but for the sake of time, we're going to jump to chapter 16, which opens up with Samson having just spent the night with a prostitute in Gaza. And if you read what happened in the previous couple chapters, then you know that woman was a weakness for Samson. That was a thorn in his side. And at this point, this was a weak point that the enemy had zeroed in on and was using to lead him down a path of sin and eventually destruction. Contrary to popular belief, Delilah is not his first rodeo, okay? When he meets Delilah, Samson has already gotten himself into much trouble on account of women. And he obviously hasn't learned that much from his mistakes because he doesn't use much caution when he meets Delilah. He falls in love with her and immediately she's approached by the Philistine leaders to try to find out what the source of Samson's strength is. This is the kicker. She agrees and three times asks him, what's the source of your strength? And three times he gives her the wrong answer. But all three times the Philistines attempted to capture and kill him based on the wrong information that he gave her. And I know many of you are probably thinking, Samson, you fool! The red flags are right in front of you. But honestly, any of us can end up just like Samson, completely unaware of the dangers and warning signs of a bad path that we are on when we don't heed these three warnings that God highlighted to me as I was journaling through this story. The first is a warning against not walking intimately with God. If you read other stories in the Bible, like David, for example, he's constantly praying, constantly talking to God. Samson isn't recorded as talking to God once. He doesn't pray not one time up until this point. The second is a warning against being unaware of your own weaknesses and against the ways the enemy tends to come against you to get you to fall. Samson is completely oblivious, okay? He's oblivious to the patterns in his life and he's oblivious to the fact that lust is the source and the common denominator to every single thing that has gone wrong in his life up until this point. The third is a warning against loving our sin, enjoying it too much, actively engaging in it, pursuing it more than we pursue righteousness. Samson loved the game. He loved sleeping with women. And why not? He was the strongest guy on the planet, right? Nothing's gone wrong yet, right? <laughs> it's all good until it's not. Now we know how the story ends. The Philistines capture him, cut off his hair, gouge his eyes out, and make him a slave. In the end, God was still able to use the situation for good, but Samson died a slave in the process, and I just don't believe that this was what God's original good and perfect plan for Samson's life was. 
Samson's story is a warning. God had given him many chances to turn things around before it got to this point, but he ignored it and his choices ultimately altered his destiny. Choose wisely. Hold on, what was that? Hold on, what was that? Why would I listen to you? It's People be like, oh, 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 you're not that guy, you're not that guy, and then there's me, existing, literally being that guy. Woo, that'll do it. <laughs> you don't have to worry about me. You do not have to worry about me. <laughs> so the Lord gave me a word, and he told me that he didn't want me to only keep it for myself, but there are other people out there that may need to hear the word as well. So I don't know about anybody else, but the season that I've been in, it's been emotionally draining, I'm not gonna lie. The devil has been very consistent and very strategic with the way that he chooses to attack me. And going through those attacks, I started getting a little frustrated with God. I was just like, God, like you see me here, like why are you not doing anything? Like you see me struggling, like why does it seem like I'm just dealing with this by myself? And the Lord spoke to me and he said, even though it may seem like I'm quiet down there with you, I am loud on your behalf in the spiritual. You are walking too much by sight and not walking by faith. I have spoken to you multiple times and given you multiple confirmation and you keep asking for more. How many times do I have to tell you in my word that I will never leave you or forsake you? How many times do I have to tell you that I'm here? And how many times do I have to tell you to cast all your anxieties and burdens on me? Someone needed that. Keep going. Don't do that. What? Don't do that. I know what you're doing. Don't do I'm that. I know what you're doing. I'm not doing anything. Listen to me. This is how many times the Jewish people have been persecuted. First in Egypt. Many times by neighboring countries. Then by Persia and Babylon. Then by the Roman Empire. Then in 70 AD. Christian and Jews faced a massive persecution. And the list goes on and the most recent one the Holocaust. But sadly, they still have one more persecution left. Pray for God's...